Tennessee Valley. So glad you're tuned in to Channel 3 Eyewitness News today. I'm Latrice Curry and I'm John Martin. Today is Monday, February 6, 2017. Let's go ahead and bring in David Carnes for a look at today's forecast. Good morning, David. Hey guys, good morning to you. Looking at uh, so a little bit of rain moving our way this later morning into the afternoon hours and then maybe some good thunderstorms for tomorrow. Outside we go. We're also dealing with some patchy dense fog east of town, north of the city as well, and a little bit of fog trying to work its way into Chattanooga. You can see it's those outlying areas that are really getting hit with uh, the low visibility there. 42 in Chattanooga, 39 in Cleveland. It is 36 degrees in Dalton. Grab the coat in Murphy. You are at 28 this morning, 37 in Altamont. Our Channel 3 Storm Alert Viper showing this trough of low pressure. That's the brown uh, dotted line there that's <laughs> lifting up to the northeast and that is going to bring some rain showers with it. Again, I think late morning, early afternoon is going to be our best chance for seeing some of those showers moving through. They'll taper off tonight after a high of 57 degrees. It'll stay in the 50s through most of the night tonight. So thunderstorms again on Tuesday. We'll have more detail on what you can expect in just a moment. All right. Thanks so much, David. Well, of course, the big story of the morning. We are talking the 51st Super Bowl. It all came down to the final seconds. It was the first time in all of NFL history that the championship final was decided in overtime, and that's when you knew the tide was turning when the game went to overtime. Yeah, for a lot of people who went to bed at halftime, they were Falcons fans. Hey, they thought everything was going to be Yeah, a lot great. of them like, yes, the Falcons are going to win the Super Bowl. But it was mm -hmm. New England that made the big comeback with the highlights from Houston. Here is Paul Shaheen. He's in! Patriots win the Super Bowl! Yeah, for sure it hurts like hell. Well, that is certainly one way to put it. Another would be historic. No team had ever rallied from 25 down to win a Super Bowl. No team had ever won a Super Bowl in overtime. But Tom Brady and the New England Patriots use Super Bowl 51 to rewrite a few things as the Atlanta Falcons end up on the wrong side of history. Here's how it played out. There's a look at Dan Quinn in just his second year on the job. His defense was storming early. They stripped LeGarrette Blount in the second quarter. Falcons recover, and that leads to points and a heavy dose of Devontae Freeman, who would finish the drive. Huge cutback, 7-0. Falcons. Atlanta would force a punt, get it back. The Patriots double Julio Jones. Matt Ryan finds the mismatch. It's Austin Hooper in the end zone. What a pass. 14-0. Nearing the half, Tom Brady did not see Robert Alford. Alford running for days, 82-yard pick six, Brady's third postseason INT, his first career postseason pick six, 21-0 Atlanta. The second half would start with an exchange of punts. The Dirty Bergs work it into the red zone. Matty Ice hits yet another option. It's Tevin Coleman, and he had the angle, 28-3. Yes, 28-3, but the Patriots rally, scoring 17 unanswered. Brady to Amendola, two-point conversion was good. Just like that, it's an eight-point game. But 17 unanswered, turn into 25 unanswered. James White with the touchdown, Brady and Amendola for the two-point conversion, and we are headed to overtime for the first time in Super Bowl history. Pats get the ball first, and they get to marching. James White will not be denied. Pushing through Falcons and into the end zone, the Pats win Super Bowl 51, scoring 31 unanswered, 34 to 28. I don't think it was one thing or another, just a couple things here and there that, that kind of got us off schedule and uh, we weren't able to overcome that. What I can tell you is how hard our guys fought. Um, we weren't caught off guard, you know, in terms of what they play and the style. Um, we just didn't finish like we were capable tonight. We had opportunities uh, as players. We had opportunities, and we we made some mistakes on the field um, that, at the end of the day, ended up costing us. Again, 34 to 28, your final score. The New England Patriots on top of the Atlanta Falcons in Super Bowl 51. It was Tom Brady's fifth Super Bowl. He now has more than anyone else. He was previously tied with Joe Montana and Terry Bradshaw at four. Brady was also named Super Bowl MVP. He now has four of those awards, more than, yeah, you guessed it, anyone else in the NFL. For one more time, I'm Paul Shaheen in Houston, Texas. All right, thanks so much there, Paul. Well, yeah, it was a it was a, a, a tough loss for Atlanta fans. That's probably putting it mildly after like going up and thinking, hey, they're winning. All right, but uh, you know what? Let's go. It was. They're reacting to from our partners at 11 Live. You're get, seeing that right now. For more on this, let's bring in Channel 3's Tim Pham, who is live in Atlanta this morning. Tim, good morning. 
Well, good morning to you guys. A different mood here in Atlanta after yesterday's Super Bowl. Some calling it heartbreak in Houston. A tough loss for Atlanta Falcon fans and not the outcome they were hoping for uh, this morning after Super Bowl. Uh, this was a, a big game for Atlanta. This was only the second time the franchise has made it to a Super Bowl. And a, a lot of people, and as Paul said, uh, this is the only time a Super Bowl has gone into overtime and some calling it the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history. The Patriots now hold five world championships. A tough reality for Atlanta fans as they wake up this morning. Uh, the last time they were in the Super Bowl was in 1998 and that didn't go in their favor either. Uh, but again, things are quiet here in Atlanta, but things lit up overnight. Words of encouragement from Atlanta Falcon fans, as you can imagine, but also a lot of disappointment. Uh, but Atlanta's mayor tweeted out win or lose he's still proud of the city and the team the team also thanking fans for their unbelievable support and telling them that they will rise up next season this season though marked actually the last season for them at the Georgia Dome they'll be playing across the street here at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium you can see here live that uh, it's pretty shiny and sparkly they're putting the final touches on this brand new state-of-the-art facility that will re uh, that will open rather uh, next season also the home of Super Bowl 52 and they're hoping that that's going to be their good luck charm and guys you know uh, I know both of you and myself are all football fans huge football fans and it's really hard when your team loses but especially when they lose at the Super Bowl this one's going to hurt for a while for Atlanta Falcons fans but again they're hoping next year they'll come back strong reporting live in Atlanta Tim Pham Channel 3 Eyewitness News and now Tim knows what it's like to be a Tennessee Vols fan. So, <laughs> Tim, welcome to welcome uh, to football in Tennessee in the South. Off, man. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. All right. Switching gears now. Some school closings to tell you about this morning due to illnesses, not the weather. Yeah, Ray County, Van Buren County, and Sweetwater City Schools will all be out today and Tuesday due to so many students and teachers being sick. Ray County Superintendent says nearly 800 students miss school Friday, roughly 18% of the student body. Officials say the flu virus is moving quickly south from the counties highlighted on your screen. Hey, Dave. Hey, good morning. Uh, yeah, we were all up uh, bleary eyed watching the yes, game. Yes, we are. It's kind of like a minute, uh, but uh, we're doing a good Monday morning looking at uh, some light showers moving through late morning into the early afternoon and warm weather also to start the week. It's 42 right now in Chattanooga, 39 Cleveland, 28. That's where the cool air is up in Murphy, North Carolina. That light rain to our southwest, that's going to be moving through the Tennessee Valley during the late morning and into the early afternoon. And then we'll see maybe a couple of sprinkles lingering into this evening before that clears out. Uh, 57 degrees for the high today in Chattanooga, Cleveland over at Murphy, 56 Altamont. So it should be a mild day with those rain showers moving through. We do have a potential for some thunderstorms tomorrow. We'll have details on that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Right now, here's a look at your up to date traffic for that. We'll get over to John. All right, David, thank you so much. 608 on this Monday morning. You're taking a look at 153 at Bonnie Oaks. Uh, there's no accidents to report on the state routes or on uh, the interstate system right now, but we are receiving information about a car wreck. Bonnie Oaks at Jersey Pike, where Michelle Heron is actually just arriving live, setting up for a live shot right now. I believe we're going to go to her right now with more information about that wreck. Michelle? Hey, good morning to you. Let's show you what's going on because this is going to impact your route. We're standing here on Bonnie Oaks right next to the Safe Light Auto Glass, and they're actually turning people around here. This is all because of a crash that's here at the intersection of Jersey Pike. It's shut down in all directions, still waiting to learn some more information regarding what happened. But I do know that in, uh, traffic investigators are here reconstructing this scene, so we know that it's serious. This crash happened around 2 o'clock this morning morning. So now four hours later and still no idea when these roads will be back open, but we're still gathering more details. If you have to come around this way, you're going to need to go another route. Uh, we'll have more updates throughout the morning. For now, reporting live in Chattanooga. I'm Michelle Heron, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Michelle, thank you again. This is Bonnie Oaks Drive at Jersey Pike. And yes, we will keep you updated right here on Channel 3.
609 and coming up on Eyewitness News today, Channel 3's Jill Jelnick will have fan reaction from Houston. Plus, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Tis the season. We'll have which cookies are most popular in our area in just a bit. Go Atlanta. We're proud you made it to the big game. Channel 3's live coverage from Houston, sponsored by Warren and & Griffin and Northgate RV in Ringgold. Welcome back 613 services are being held today for a Nashville police officer who went into the Cumberland River while trying to save a woman. A Metropolitan Nashville police spokesperson says a memorial service will be held at noon for 44 year old Eric Law at Cornerstone Church in Nashville. A private ceremony for the family is being held this morning. 40 year old Julie Glisson will be charged with aggravated vehicular homicide once she leaves the hospital. An investigation found Glisson put the car into gear as Mama and another officer were trying to get her out. Well, Chattanooga and Hamilton County will receive $6 million in funds after Alstom failed to meet its obligations. Mayor Andy Burke says the company was given $13 million in tax breaks back in 2008 and an agreement to create 300 jobs and invest millions in the property on Riverfront Parkway in return. But the company broke that agreement when it closed its three Chattanooga facilities over the summer in an effort to cut costs. The settlement between the city, county, and the current property owner, GE Power, means the city will recover about half of those <clears throat> tax breaks. This is a business deal. They didn't live up to their end. 
and we told them, if you don't live up to your end, you, you need to um, compensate us for what we gave you that, that you didn't produce. And that's what we've asked them to do. Well, this is the first time in Chattanooga history city and county officials have pursued a company that failed to meet obligations. Moving forward, Mr. Burke says future pilot agreements will have a clause that would require companies to repay tax breaks in full if they fail to meet obligations. The deadline to register to vote in the Chattanooga election is today. Candidates for the next mayor are Larry Groan, David Crockett, Chris Long and current mayor Andy Burke. And six of the nine city council members will be decided. Three are running unchallenged. Early voting starts next Wednesday. Election day is March 7th. You can find your voting location by visiting our website, wrcbtv.com. All righty, well, the Girl Scouts are celebrating the air 100th anniversary of cookie sales. Mm. And a recent online poll shows the most popular cookie by state. And this is really comes as no surprise. All I right, think. the <laughs> top pick is in. And most areas is Thin Mints, followed by Samoas, then Tagalongs in the Tennessee Valley. The top picks are Thin Mints for Tennessee, Samoas for Georgia, and North Carolina, Tagalongs uh, for Alabama. If you haven't bought your cookies yet, you still got through March. I haven't, have we even had a, I haven't, have you had any Girl Scouts ask you? I have, I've already made a, I placed an order. My favorites, I like the Thin Mints, but I also like the Tree Fools too, so. I don't know what I like. I, I don't dislike any of them, I don't think. Probably not. They're cookies. They're, I know. I mean, I'm a human, so I, yeah. I like them. I you just don't like know. You like cookies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For more on the Super Bowl and fan reactions, of course, that is a big story. The morning we're going to have coverage. All morning, here's Jill Jeldick in Houston. Heartbreaking for Atlanta fans, historical for Patriot fans, and just plain remarkable for football fans. From 31 unanswered points to the first overtime in championship history, Super Bowl 51 was many things to many people, but it will always be remembered as one of the best games of all time. Five, number five. No doubt. This is Tom Overcame. Brady's redemption. In a word, I'm emotionally scarred. I'm depressed. We had the game in our hands, and in typical Atlanta Falcon fashion, we gave it away. At no point did we think that there was a shot that we were going to lose the game. No, not at all. I thought we had it in the bag the whole time. You know, I feel like bird down, but that's okay because we will rise up. Atlanta is a city of resilience. 1995 was the last time the city of Atlanta won a professional sports championship. But now with the NFL MVP returning as well as a brand new stadium in the works, Atlanta will find a way to rise up. In Houston, Jill Jelnick, Channel 3 Eyewitness Sports. All right, well, thanks so much there, Jill. Coming up on Eyewitness News today, David will be here with a look at your forecast. Plus, we're going to let you know if there are any problems on your morning commute. Guess what? If you're in the Bonnie Oaks, Jersey Pike area, big problem. We'll update you on that right after this.
Channel 3 Eyewitness News traffic sponsored by CHI Memorial's Mary Ellen Loker Breast Center. We offer a full spectrum of clinical and support services. For an exam, call 423-495-4040. Welcome back to 621 on this Monday morning. Let's go outside, take a live look about the, uh, the big story of the day traffic-wise. Bonnie Oaks Drive at Jersey Pike. Michelle Heron on scene right there. She has confirmed one person has died. One person has been transported with non-life-threatening injuries to the hospital. Bonnie Oaks at Jersey Pike. You can see uh, police officers shutting down that intersection. Not sure who just got through there, but if uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Oaks and Jersey Pike is in your morning commute, you need to find an alternate route at this point as police are again confirming one dead, one transported with non-life-threatening injuries. We'll keep you updated right here on Channel 3. Now here's David Carnes with a look at the forecast. John, thank you so much. Looking at some uh, pretty dense fog in some of the outlying areas. Be careful of that. North and east of town might even in the valley hit a few areas of patchy fog. Otherwise mild today with some showers popping up during the late morning and early afternoon. We're going to see some storms potentially becoming severe on Tuesday and then warm with more showers late Wednesday night. Here's the potential for that severe weather. A slight risk of severe storms from Chattanooga up to Nashville over into Memphis. Biggest threat in this risk area is going to be heavy rain, strong winds and an outside chance of some small hail. Really not looking at much of any of a threat of tornadoes for Tuesday, but we will need to keep a very close eye on the weather throughout the afternoon tomorrow. 42 degrees right now in Chattanooga, 39 in Cleveland, maybe a light jacket this morning, a uh, little bit thicker of a coat up in Murphy where it's 28 degrees right now. And you can see these showers off to our southwest. Those are going to lift northeast into the Tennessee Valley uh, expanding out. There's the trough of low pressure pushing all of those rain showers toward our area. Nothing severe with these. This is just rain and that's all it's going to be. Uh, I think over the next few days we're going to see about a half an inch to an inch of rain. Pretty widespread. We'll get our first round of showers moving through again during the late morning and early afternoon with a few of those showers maybe lingering into the evening hours and then tapering off. We'll have another line of storms moving through Tuesday afternoon right around the beginning of drive time. We'll start to see them pressing through. They may weaken a bit as they move over the Tennessee Valley, but still the potential for heavy rain, gusty winds and small hail is going to be there for your commute home tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be fine for Wednesday. Uh, maybe some clouds and a slight chance for a smattering of rain here and there. It'll be late Wednesday night when we have a better chance of some heavier rain moving through even into the early morning hours of Thursday. We're talking about one, two in the morning when we could see some of that rain pressing through behind that front. Northerly winds will cool us down. We'll go from 70 on Wednesday for a high down to the upper 40s on Thursday for a high today. Cloudy, mild, some rain showers, uh, 57 for the high and we just get warmer uh, as we move through the next couple of days. Mostly cloudy tonight will drop down to 49 and our storm alert seven day forecast gets us up to 63 on Tuesday and then 70 on Wednesday. Again, that slight risk of storms Tuesday afternoon. Uh, this for late Wednesday night into the overnight hours of early Thursday morning and then we'll cool down on Thursday afternoon. A high of 49 with the cool air continuing to move in on Friday morning. 29 for the low and then we'll warm back up as we head into the weekend reaching 70 by Sunday with more rain possible on Sunday night, guys. All right. Thanks so much, David. Got it. Well, today marks Queen Elizabeth II's 65th anniversary of ascending to the throne. Her father, King George VI, died in his sleep in February of 1952, while then Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip were on a trip to Kenya. In 2015, she beat the record set by her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, 63 years and seven months. Queen Elizabeth has recently cut back on her public schedule and is expected to spend today at her country estate. She is the only British monarch to ever celebrate her sapphire jubilee. Well, Britain's Prince William, his wife Kate and Prince Harry took part in a relay race Sunday to support their charity Heads Together. All right, the three were joined by about 150 other runners who are training for the London Marathon at Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in East London. Kate came ready to run, but William <laughs> and Harry were just too fast. They both beat Kate in the race. Heads Together is a charity which aims to promote mental well-being in young people. All right. All right, time now to take a look. I was like, that's kind of unfair that they were competing against Kate there, but okay. Take a look at our salutes. Congratulations and happy 16th birthday to our Bojangles winner. Hey. Yeah, happy birthday, Dylan Collins. Your family loves you a lot.
Uh -huh. Also celebrating the day, happy 24th birthday to Cody Morgan. Your family and friends want to wish you a special day. Our parent we're doing pet of the week now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Holly is a seven year old <laughs> sweet cat. She's from a hoarding situation and does have an eye injury. I love this cat. I but okay. So uh, needs a better home. Obviously cleaner. Um, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, contact H E S to give Holly a fur. Ever oh, Kristen, family. I like the way you put that fur ever That's nice. There. And I just, this face has me, I know it has an eye injury, but it's so yeah. adorable. It's cute. Come on, give them all. And this oh. is what we're starting to do this. Every Monday, we're going to feature a pet of the week. We've done this before with the Humane Educational Society. Okay. And we want to help support them and give these deserving pets a good home. So look for that <laughs> each week as we kind of help feature a great pet. If you're looking for someone to add to your family. Oh, I love it.